Hello, Grand User on View, this time for our sale on the 7th of November. And uh, well, what have we got to sell for you that time? Seems to be lots of taxidermy. Not all come from the same vendor, but, um, but yes, we've got thrushes. We've got, um, what are those? Partridge, perhaps, a bit small. Quail, small birds, yeah. lot 539. Stoats or weasels, a, a, an otter, I guess. Almost oh. albino, but maybe faded. Um, sandpipers, exotic pheasants, so and I'll, there'll be more, no doubt, as we travel through um, the sale. Yes, don't linger. I mean, Russell Flint prints, if you can buy them, please do. Used to be a lot of money, used to be a thousand pounds each, now they're sort of 30, 40 pounds. Times change. Uh, anyway, lot 222, how about this for a showy cabinet? Look at that, it's got booby ladies on the front, which is always nice. Um, and um, yeah, sort of plain fitted out interior. It's a reproduction in the sort of French um, Empire-esque, Second Empire sort of influence, but with some slight tweaks in it that make it not quite bang on copy. A uh, little chip to the marble in the corners, but still quite a decorative thing. Lot 222. Big dinner service here. Which one is it? Let's have a look. It's Spode. Look at that. Spode Lausanne pattern. Nice restrained pattern. It is, isn't it? And lots of it in that sort of 19, I mean, it's not 70s, it's more recent than that, but that, that sort of shape started in the 70s. Um, so, yeah, good long run of dinner service there for you. Uh, drift past a moorhen, I think, moorhen or a coot. Uh, and how about this? This hit the wall hard, as they say, lot 552, a pike. Yeah, there we go, 551, we've got a fox. So, uh, again, more taxidermy. Nice big screen at the back here, lot 214. These uh, chinoiserie screens, dressing screens or room dividers. Yes, it's got good height, doesn't it? Um, anyway, there we go. Nice screen if the screen is what you're after. Some good pictures. We'll, we'll, we'll pick up on a few pictures as we go through, um, including works by Mr. David Shrigley, uh, which um, is not everybody's cup of tea, but then everything we have here isn't everybody's cup of tea. It's just as well. But things such as this. When life gives you a lemon, you must eat the lemon, it says. There we go. Uh, they're, they're being offered in pairs. That is lot, um, let's have a look. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, seven, two, three. Um, elsewhere, some nice little satin wood side tables here. Look at that, nice clean table. Late Victorian, got a slight aesthetic feel to it. What do I mean by aesthetic? Well, aesthetic movement. So Victorian uh, behind you is a really good example of an aesthetic movement piece of furniture. Here we are, look at this. So um, restrained, artist designed, influenced by classical motifs, such as these sort of stylized foliate motifs here, often ebonized, this case using a very nice burr wood as well to blend with it and then often with these painted panels of birds and the like. That's lot 215. There's another one over here, 217, reinforcing the uh, idea, look, with um, bullfinches, I suppose, or goldfinches. These are Victorian, this is Victorian, this is 1870, or thereabouts, 1870s to 80s. Um, and uh, yeah, sort of very much sort of um, high-minded, um, ideas about what your furniture is going to look like it can be a bit gloomy it's not the most fashionable things these days but that's why i like that table over there because it's got a bit of color and uh that was lot should you be interested 212 so carry on through drift past this quite a nice little bit of decorative furniture here lot 210 canings in good order marbles in good order ready to go we'll go and have a look at the smalls so in the smalls, uh, again, good mixture. What caught it? What's catching our eye? We're, 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 we're seeing this as you do. So um, we're just grabbing what we like. 397, unusual bit of cloisonne there. You know, typically it's Japanese um, enamel with, they, they lay wires onto the body and then they fill the gaps with this enamel. And, and therefore it's, it's cloisonne enamel. That's the right. technique to achieve whatever pattern you want, whether it's a plant, and you fill in the gaps. There's, here's, here's more cloisonne. And so there's wires separating it all out. And then they put in the enamel powders and fire it uh, to get the desired end effects. So that's one way of doing enameling. The other is champlevu, where you carve it out and fill the holes with enamel. But yeah, decoration is unusual. 397. 
Uh, this caught the eye, didn't That's it? Right. 394, I think this is Joseph Powell. We will have catalogued it, no doubt. Um, it's a nice shape, isn't it? it that is. sort of orchidy shape, very Art Nouveau, very arts and crafty. Uh, and slightly more unusual model. I haven't seen that one so often. Look, 394. Fours. Oh, this caught my eye. It's initial BP. Now, BP, it looks to date to the 1920s, 30s, perhaps. Who do we think? Could it be Bertram Priestman? Maybe, but I, I'm not rather sort of heavy handed. Uh, is that IBP or is that just BP? So a curiosity there, lot 672. Um, yeah, and as you know, we look on the back, no clues at all. Um, Madderton and Co. Stretcher, but that's the only clue. And a bit of old woodwork. But someone should recognise that. And is that a working sketch or is that just someone who's not that good? Um, <laughs> I think it's a working, well, I think it's a bit of both, maybe. But anyway, I like that. I caught my eye. Uh, books. You've got some books. You've got some Agatha Christie's. Mrs. McGinty's dead, did you know? Yes. Well, there you are. She is. Um, so, yeah, a little round of Christie's there. Some bindings. History of England. Times Embassy. Catcher in the Rye there with some Dylan Thomas. Um, so, yeah, a few little books to have a look at. Where would you like to go next? Well... No, they're not really. <laughs> they're Robert Houston, who, if they were, if they were originals, they would be um, of interest. Pretty fairly prominent Scottish artist. But these are colour aquatints. So, and they've got labels on the back to prove it. So, of the period, in nice original frames with the original mounts that are now a bit mucky, um, but very low value. 30, 40 quid. Richmond. Anyone live near Richmond? Got 681. I think this is Richmond. Your sister-in-law lives near My sister-in-law lives near there. Uh, and there, another view of the Thames there. This chap, Lewis, he turned them out. Paintings, views, looking down towards Richmond and the like. Uh, so there we go. That's a thing, isn't it? Yes. 471. Uh, I don't know. What, what, like me to make it up? I can. Um, so it's um, copper. It's been hand embossed and chased, so banged out from behind and chased from in front to give the detail. Decorative. 471, it's just a decorative panel mm. as far as I can see. Looking at the framing and the back, I'd say it dates from the 60s to 70s, 1960s, 70s. Down here there seem to be more, and I don't know whether they're in with it. The sort of fire screens and the like of, of similar ilk, um, but maybe they're coming up later, so the, uh, the, the, the website will tell the truth. Um, an interesting lot here, perhaps, of weapons, lot 438. It looks like you get a sword that's um, not, not stuck. In fact, it's well oiled and well greased, that blade. So a late 19th century, possibly continental sword, army sword, a very battered Japanese um, short blade. Um, look at that, all chewed out, been whacked into things over the years um, and then a bayonet as well so uh, we're still seeing weapons selling very well there are some curious things such as these um, molds look oh, that's fabulous that is fabulous so, all paper prints and that sort of thing? well it's too deep to be that isn't it so what then oh uh, tiles well it's you're, you're creating a flat object aren't you when you put these together you put a sheet of something in and you drop this on and you take it out. And so it's going to be something quite thin. So it's going to be embossing foil or something like that, I think. It'll be interesting to see what we say, mm. won't it, on the website. Yep. Um, it's great that we do this and um, don't know what things are when we're showing them. Here they are. Is that another one? No, that's just another mold from Milano, that one, Italian, fairly late one. But uh, more of them there. So interesting lots of moulds in this. And another lot here. Look. A real quantity. I mean, the other, I suppose the other option is that it just sits in here. And you take it out and press it onto whatever you're going to press it onto or into. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a really good run. So uh, we'll all look forward to finding yes, out what those are. Everybody's going to have to look it up. Your... The cats today, like, uh, lot 445. So these are typically French um, pottery 
uh, Galley, the people that made the uh, amazing cameo glass, made a run of these, um, and other people have copied it and emulated it. Great expression, often with glass eyes, really sweet that. Flower, printed flowers, so always look closely. If they're hand painted, it's a sign of extra quality and expense. If they're printed on, which these are, it's a sign that's a less exotic example. Foot's been broken off as well, but there we go. There's the still smiling, as you say. Yes. This is this is yeah. So this is Lord Snowden. Um, I would say that's something like a cyberchrome print, high quality color photograph, essentially, um, signed by Snowden. Um, so there we go. If you like a bit of Snowden, there's some other con near contemporary photography in the sale, such as these, who are by. A cheat sheet on them somewhere. Tom Lovelace is the photographer, um, and this one is called uh, Coastal Blocks. It's a C type print, as is the other one, both by Lovelace. So, if you fancy some contemporary photography, uh, there are three or four lots I would say in the sale that feature that. Coming back down the other side, what do you think that is? Uh, You're getting close, it's to stretch your hat. It's a hat stretcher, and, and actually, we've got um, head circumference measurements down there, down the bottom. Uh, lot 415, it's in with um, a diabolical looking machine that sort of has hooks and things down the bottom. Looks like it, it knits or something, I don't know, but we'll have, we'll have looked that up and be explaining that as well. Mark, okay. Well, is it? It depends. I mean, yes, it's clever. It's stained glass. It's it's loosely in what we call Tiffany style because anything stained glass like that gets called Tiffany style. But it's much more recent. It's 1970s or 80s. It's got a bruise there, a broken panel. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the money, and it sort of feels to me like it should sit on, you know, something like that. Yeah. Uh, roughly. That was, there you go. So you could buy lot 41 and 425. And then tap around trying to get the fitting that would make it sit on top properly. Oh, let's not put people off with minor issues like that. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Well, kind of, but there we go. You know, I'll turn things around. Terracotta, bronzed, lot 428. Nice set of scales there. Got a big kitchen that looked good, lot 430. Now, do, we, do you want to look in the strong room? Yes, okay. So a bit more around here. We were talking about Tiffany style lamps. There we go. There's a Tiffany style lamp for you. So not of the period, because if it was, it wouldn't be in our weekly sale. It would be front cover of our fine sale and, and making tens of thousands. Uh, but, you know, not a bad reproduction, that. It's, these colors are quite subtle. It's in pretty good condition. It's a nice shape. It is a bronze base. And, and it, again, not a bad patination. So that's 302. There's another one up here that I'm not quite so keen on, 301. But each to their own, and um, they look good lit up. Of course, you know when the light comes through. Finally, before we go in the strong room, down this side, collection of studio pottery. I'll go in front. There we go. Collection of studio pottery. Uh, we've got Kate Byrne. I know that because I read it on the label. Uh, a whole mixture here of interesting um, pots and the like. Um, of really, you know, it's 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 fascinating stuff. This. Um, Got some original receipts, the Goldmark Gallery there for a, a, a Jean-Nicolas Gerard pitcher and cup, and they cost £189 back in 2014. Let's see what they make this time. I always like these. These are um, sort of slipware, um, traditional Sussex and other places, no doubt, uh, slipware, but uh, these are kind of fun. They're not, these aren't old ones. They're, they've been more recently done, I imagine, but, um, but they're nice. Kind of fun things. That's quite fun, isn't it? You like that? Yes. Yeah. That's 277. Right. Okay. Enough of that. Let's look in the strong room. Okay. So picked out a few lots of jewelry just to tempt you, hopefully. Let's start with lot 890. There's quite a pretty little emerald and diamond ring. Very delicate. I don't think it's as old as it pretends to be. Oh, oh actually, it's got a nice set of marks in there. Yeah, that's got a good set of hallmarks in, so we should have the exact date on that. So that's lot 890. Okay. Then, Belle Epoque, that sort of period, 1900, 1910, 889. This um, rather smart looking bar brooch with the pearl and the diamonds. Very good, clean condition. I know they're not in fashion. Makes them quite reasonable to buy. Uh, something else, I spotted, I was looking at this lot and thought, this is a great lot, 908. Did I rave about seals? 
not so long ago. Yes. Yeah, I must have got a thing about them. So you've got a collection of fob seals here. Uh, that's brass um, with a white metal index there that the line, not particularly special, circa 1900. There is a glass one with a little sort of forget-me-not type mm. thing that probably had a mount at one time and has lost it. Then you get um, a watch key inset with an orange agate, sort of gold overlaid. Definitely 19th century and four more. Probably 19th century. That one sort of early 19th. That's early 19th. These perhaps a little bit later, but four more. So we've got a, a chap walking by with some sign sort of uh, inscription there. Did you get that? We've got a plain one. We've got a fairly ornate monogram with a leopard or lion jumping above it. And we've, we've got a blood. Oh, that's sweet. We've got a bloodstone with music. Look at that. Wouldn't that be cool to work out what that music was? Yes, it would. Uh, but for my money, the star of the lot is this one. Look at that. That is uh, gold mounted. He's got, I think, definitely diamond set to the collar and down by his foot. I think he had, yes, he's still got diamonds in the eyes. They're glittering. And then a, oh, it's a head. It's a head. It's a classical head. It's not the most exciting of, 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 um, Intaglias there, but uh, I think that's rather nice. So a good lot there, 908. Nice lot, somebody. Um, coming up to date, well, there's a dinky little diamond ring. It's not very big, but it's very one. sparkly, isn't mm -hmm. it? Beautiful, 907. And then here, this now here's a sign of how we roll in these places. So when was this? Monday, I got an email saying, here's a photograph of my brooch. Can you sell it? I replied and said, yes, we can sell it for you and hopefully it'll make this amount of money, but we do need to see it because it's hard to value jewelry online because you can't see how things are and what the stones are like properly and that lady brought it in we had a look said yes we'll put it in the cell she went great stick it in and here it is four days later it's up on the website fully catalogued ready to go and it'll be offered for sale in 10 days time and she'll get the money two days after that it's not bad is it that's not, that's not bad is that, is that blue, though? you are absolutely right that is blue enamel so this is a victorian piece was it part of something bigger maybe it's got the sort of look that it might have been very slightly adapted or, yeah, part of a set, but still pretty. Lot 916. And then something modern, more up to date anyway. 914. Very stylish. Look at that. Yeah. Tiger's eye. Um, nice gold mount. Not any particular maker's marks or anything like that, but lot 914. So there we go. Some, um, some jewelry for you to think about. Christmas is coming and all that. Uh, fine sale. We're, we're sort of coming towards a, a, a deadline for fine sale at, towards the end of November. So if you're thinking about consigning, now is the time to, to give us a shout or drop us an email with, with whatever you've got and we're, we're happy to get in touch. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it's a big sale out there. There's all sorts of goodies to, uh, to have a rummage through. So do try and come along. If not, have a good look on the website and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Thank you for watching. Oh,